Boom. Neil here with the Optic Meta Show. Mr. Terry Campion is not here. This is show number 986, coming up on a thousand shows. Uh, I'm going to dedicate the show to uh, someone who came on the show three times. That is Dr. Wallace J. Nichols, and sadly he passed away last week. And we're here in front of the beautiful Santa Cruz Surfing Museum with a glossary of Santa Cruz dignitaries, starting off with Mr. Shane Skelton, who got me down here to do this. And so we're off and running. We're going to go talk about what tonight? Um, so we are talking about um, preserving Westcliff, the way it is, the way it's been. We formed this uh, Westcliff Drive and Recreation Coalition, um, made up of these wonderful people right here, right. community members. Um, and there's some other people that aren't here right now, but there's about 20 plus of us, a little over 20 of us, have gotten together to work on, um, you know, putting the facts together and showing why um, Westcliff should be preserved the way it is. Um, so we've gone through and we have some core points and um, I'm just going to read them because we have a few. But uh, the first one is we're looking for a solution, a solution that allows uh, two-way for cars, walkers, and bikes. So we want access for all, including um, access for those who can't walk or ride a bike, right? So we think cars are super important as much as they're demonized at the current, in the current times. Um, we also... Um, want to keep uh, two-way traffic on Westcliff because it keeps the neighborhood safer. As we've seen with the Westcliff closure, it's gotten really dangerous in the neighborhoods. All these cars are going through the neighborhoods. On a busy weekend in the summer, yeah. over 10,000 cars go up and down so Westcliff. So they're funneling cars to the neighbors here? Yeah, like yeah. Today? What's yeah. Okay. Well, because it's closed, right? Yeah. But it's just, it's just, that's just a small vision into the future of how it could be. Yeah. And um, if you live in those neighborhoods, I'd be bummed. I live in the Midtown, as everyone in town knows, but I love Westcliff. It's 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 a Santa Cruz tradition. It's it's part of our it's uh, heritage, right? It's like it's like an old house on Ocean View, right. right? If you're gonna fix an old house, you have to preserve it the way it is. Westcliff should be the same. It's it's that special to us. Um, another thing is um, we think actually one like any way. If you have to go one way, it's counterproductive to the climate city and state climate agenda because it actually increases. Um, carbon emissions by increasing the distance and the stop and go traffic. And if you know anything about cars, the longer you drive and the more stop and go you make, that's the more gas you burn, the more climate emissions right. or carbon emissions you emit. So it's counterproductive to environmental things, right? Um, and then lastly, or not lastly, but we also we think there's enough space for everything. We've done measurements. We're going to be giving these measurements to, um, there's going to be an ad hoc committee with the city. So during the um, a couple of meetings ago uh, during a uh, city council meeting, they came up with a tenth pillar and, um, and a, uh, kind of a where they're going to do an ad hoc committee to look at the 50 year plan and redo it and think about how they're going to do it. So we're trying to feed solid factual information to this ad hoc committee so they're not just going off a uh, popular vote or any special interest group right we're we, we we're here for everyone so um and lastly we want to talk about the use case which bob is an expert at, as far as how westcliff is used and that's going to be a very important thing so Daryl, you want to say something? Yeah, no, I think it's just really important. I, who, I really, are you? who are you? Who are you? Hi, I'm Daryl. Daryl Flieberos. <laughs> uh, Everyone knows who he is. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I, I think mainly it's, it is a historical site, you know, and we do want to keep it the way it is. But mainly just living in the neighborhood. I live on Laguna over there, and cars are going through there all the time. They weren't there before. What? They weren't there before. No, they weren't there before. In, in, in Plateau, where my dad lives, he actually got speed bumps put in his street because of so many cars going through there. And it's just gonna be crazy if this comes to one way eventually. And you know what, if they can make the Golden Gate Bridge in 1940, yeah. if they can, whatever it was, uh, they can fix the rest of the drive. You know what I mean? So um, I'm in support of, of keeping it the way it is and I'm concerned about the kids playing in front of their houses and in the neighborhoods for traffic and things like that. Um, we all love bikes, you know? We all ride bikes, but as far as cars coming on to Westcliff and leaving Westcliff, it's a great path. 
people that are going to be living on Delaware Street, yeah. there's going to be a traffic jam all the way up to Natural Bridges all day long because people are going to want to come back around and see it again. Yeah. So you're basically ignoring all these people that lives in the neighborhood because you want to ride your bike here and there. You know what I mean? Like so, it's it's just you got to think about that before you do such a big thing. So um, that's all I want to say. So thank, thank you. you. Thank you. And I'm Deborah Elston. I'm, yeah, you're up next. I'm with Santa Cruz Neighbors, and the reason why I got involved was the city seemed to be making decisions without the neighbors' involvement or consideration, and so we really want to notify the neighbors via email and newsletter um, to let them know really what's going on. And one of the things that I've been learning since I've been involved um, with this group is they have a vast knowledge of uh, currents and wind directions and things that could make a difference in how we preserve the cliff line itself and maybe take care of some of these caves. Uh, what I've also learned is that this has all been discussed four times in a hundred years and every generation, which I am tied to this town generationally, has decided to preserve it for the next generation. So that's kind of where I'm at. I believe there should be access for all as well. Cool. Yeah. Bob, you ready? Yeah, I'm Bob Pearson. Um, we have an incredible asset here. It's just world famous. Uh, it's great for the Santa Cruz locals, Santa Cruz tourists, and uh, everybody who comes here absolutely loves this thing. Some changes need to be made, some adjustments and things like that. If we're going to make adjustments, we need to take into consideration people use. Who uses this? And uh, the 1983 Santa Cruz survey, the 1997 Santa Cruz task force that he was in, the more recent Verizon study, and the study that I did for the last the survey for the last three and a half years as a member of the technical, technical advisory board, um, all showed that over 80% of the people use was in vehicles, under 16% was in walkers, and under 4% was in cars. And when you take a look at the people Bikes. use, bikes, bikes. bikes. It's, it's uh, yeah, it's what I think, not what I say. So, but when you take a look at who's using it, that if you're going to make some decisions, you got to make it based on who's using it. Right. And so when you break that down, it's for every one person enjoying this on a bike, you have 20 people in a car enjoying this. So it's a 1 to 20 ratio. And so when you look at that, you go, okay, let's go ahead and eliminate one of the roads for 20% of, for 20 people for one bike is just not right in my opinion. Okay. You, they need to take a look at the people use and make intelligent decisions on it. What's the state of, you, you take a look over here, what's going on, Bob? What do you mean? The, the caves, caves and, the, and you oh, talked about that before. I talked about we have it. some major caves okay. here. Uh, we have a, a cave right here at the at the lighthouse, and we have its beach cave. Its right. beach cave goes 65 feet deep. In the back, it's 45 feet wide across. It's 20 feet from this museum here. It's 20 feet from the other cave. When these things wash through, if they wash through, this lighthouse is going to be gone. And this say, this point right here that protects the steamer lane right. is is, uh, is going to get all blown out. But you walk out right here now, just uh, west of this, it's all blown out. From this point here, it's all protected. And so I, we need to save this for this lighthouse, for this point. Look at all the people enjoying this place right now. They come out here and walk and view the surf. You know, the Monterey Bay Sanctuary here. This is just a phenomenal thing that we need to save. And like uh, the 1984 Rogers Johnson study said that this is a valuable asset. It's economically sound to fix this, and we need to develop a program to mitigate the problems. Okay. And then, but then also going to Bob, you know about how they were supposed to armor the cliffs and, and, and you know and at least help the cliffs sustain future storms and erosion in '83, and they didn't finish the job, right? There were, there's been a, uh, the Johnson study said that we need to get on this, we need to get on it soon. Erosion is happening, and they recommended uh, walls and riprap to be put up in this place to protect it. And uh, they're really, we've done a, a little of that. But these caves right here, they need to be, uh, this problem needs to be solved soon. What's, what's the priority, number one priority, the first priority to, to 
shield up what you've got down here? What? Raising money or the city council the, the approval? The city has to decide to do it. Okay. Yeah. The, first off, you have to decide the importance. Uh, the, the communication has been basically that there's been no erosion for the last two decades. And that's not true. And since they say this and think this, then the problem is, okay, we're going to give it a couple years before we do anything. But a, a committee was just established, and I'm on it, and I'm meeting with the engineer Friday, and we're going to talk about this, and I, there's some energy going towards it right now, and it shows promise for the future, so I'm pretty excited about it, as we are really excited about yeah, it. Cool. Yeah, okay. yeah to just, make it a priority. Sure. Okay. Just one thing, too, is when they put the cement here at the point, they stuck it on the cliff. They did the last time they did a rip route. Uh, I'm not talking about the cement that fell down. It actually protects, oh. protects this right here. Yeah. And it really does. Yeah. Yeah. Protect it. Yeah. That piece of concrete that's been sitting there for 25 years or 30 years, I don't know. It, the waves don't go breaking into the softer yeah. sandstone. Yeah. So armoring it creates like a natural reef. Armoring the rip wrap definitely protects it. Yeah. Everyone, all the engineers agree with it. Yeah. And uh, they think it's a great idea. But it needs to happen sooner than later, and that's what's going on right now. And I think there's some energy right now, and people are agreeing that okay, let's make a move on this. As Friday, we're meeting with the engineers to go over this. Yeah. And that's kind of where we're coming to too. It's like, why are we talking about trying to do all this and spend money to try and do, change the way our traffic goes? Why don't we spend the time fixing the problem? It's fixable. It's not two different things. You it's that problem. It's, this problem and that problem. It is, but it's two in the same. But okay. it, 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 one leads into the other, right? right? But why would you put the cart before the horse? Like, ever, we're talking about this, like, um, what do they call it? A, a retreat. Managed retreat. Managed retreat. Managed retreat. But why retreat? I mean, look at Big Sur. Are they retreating, Big Sur? No, they they put the road back. They put it back. They're not like, hey, we're just not going to ever build a road again. Right. Bixby Bridge is done. We're just done. That's never going to happen. We are in communication with the Coastal Commission too, and they agree that in certain places, riprap armoring is a great idea. It will solve the problem. Did you, did, did, hasn't that worked at Pleasure Point? Yes, it's working great. Right. right. Yeah. Yeah. And they said it's going to change the wave. Didn't change the wave. What if? It, did it? I don't think so. No, no but it's worked out not there. at all. No. But could you could that, would that work here? Or in the I talked to several engineers yeah. here, and some sort of uh, rip. The, the negative thing of riprap it takes up beach space, which is legitimate. But bottom line is this beach out here, no one goes in there. No, no one. No. I think I was the only one in this last two three years to go into this cave and in that cave like that. No one goes in there, so it's it's uh, plus the caves get pretty dangerous for for people going kids going playing in there. It's good to block that off. Right. And so if you block that off with some riprap at an 45 degree angle, the waves it diminishes the wave power, and then you fill it back up with cement. It's yeah. relatively cheap. It's a relatively easy idea, and this is what engineers have mentioned in, in the past as a solution to this. Hi, Kim Stoner, one of the founders of the Surf Museum here, a local historian and a surf historian too. Uh, just to reiterate what Bob was talking about, the caves first. Um, it was just done to rectify the problem. We're going to have a giant seal rock. We're going to have water surging through the beach side. It's going to compromise point surf break. You're going to have all this water rushing through there. It's going to mess things up. In addition to the wind situation, you know, um, it just seems to me like it's a problem that can be solved. Um, hopefully, there'll be some funding to to do that. And then as far as Westcliff Drive goes, that uh, historically was adopted as a federal highway in 1924 by our then current mayor in the city of Capitola. And at that time, Westcliff Drive ran from Mission Street Extension down Natural Bridges Drive through Natural Bridges and back up to Westcliff where yeah. it is now. Yeah. There was only two accesses into Santa Cruz at that time. There was Mission to Bay and there was Westcliff Drive. Delaware Avenue was the Ocean Shore Railroad until the 30s. And then through abandonment, the city took that back. But there are only two accesses in there. So right now, you really only have three accesses on the west side. The minute you shorten one, as the neighbors have noticed, you have traffic impacting quiet neighborhoods. And I, I look at it this way. Uh, you can bike in either lane of traffic presently, whether you're on a regular bike or an e-bike or whatever. And you can also bike on the multi-use path. So you have your choice, your options um, of, of any lane of traffic at this point. And I'm a biker, and I'm a surfer, you know, and I'm a sailor. 
you know. So, and I'm a walker too, you know, so I enjoy all the uses. But when I want to take my mom, who's 101 years old and was born in this town for a ride around west of, why do we have to detour down these side streets? Yeah. And that's a, that's a, a situation. And people with wheelchairs too, how are they going to enjoy it, you know? There is plenty of room for all the walkers, all the cars, all the bikes. Plenty of room. There's excess of room. I brought music with me too. So. <laughs> and then, and just to close, I would say um, maintain West Cliff Drive and preserve it for the future generations as has been done in the past. Yeah. Don't neglect it. It's priority been happening. I know you. I know you. Yeah, I know you. <laughs> Lynn Robinson. Um, been in this neighborhood for speak up a little bit. Thirty years plus at the house I'm in. Oh, just anyhow, um, been around for a long, long time in Santa Cruz and such, and have also watched how the city itself ha tries and does its best to communicate with people in the community. I was on our city council for eight years and mayor my last year. So I think what made me really get connected and want to be a part of the conversation is seeing how many people were unaware and not part of the conversation about the changes in the plans for West Cliff itself to become a one-way road. And even though it's an artery road, that's a major, major part of the infrastructure of getting around the whole Lower West Side, uh -huh. the entire Lower West Side. So in getting together and talking about um, West Cliff Drive and recreation as a way to look at the whole picture. Um, the city at one point stopped talking about West Cliff Drive and just started referring to West Cliff Recreation Area only. And I was trying to figure that one out. Um, because usually you try to include everyone in those conversations and I was, it was very apparent to me that that wasn't happening. Right. It wasn't. Some of it was by design, some of it was just by not being able to figure out how to reach out to people. Um, I specifically went around my neighborhood just to simply ask if they knew that the city council was being asked to um, do a two-year pilot program as a one-way on West Cliff, and no one knew. Just They just didn't know. And it's a big impact. Um, I think that, I think one of the points made, especially when I think about both your moms, actually, when you have people that can't really traverse this on foot, on bike, um, and the car is their mode of transportation, the beauty of our community and of our city, I mean, you got to do it. I know. Right there. This is the view, yeah, this, view. that's the view right everyone here. uses go, when you cannot turn around and go the other way. I get him. Not nothing. <laughs> um, so I think it's really important to have this conversation at a, at a much more inclusive level and include the people that are so impacted by the fact that you would be taking away an entire lane of traffic. You can't come, you, you'd have to be cir circulating through the entire neighborhoods and that's another conversation. Richard Schmidt has a beautiful description of what he sees, what would be happening, the climate issue that Shane was talking about when you have people just traversing through the neighborhoods to try to get back. Um, I happen to live on a street that's being considered the third alternative when West Cliff, as they see it as a failure. So anyone that lives on Delaware, they, I'm, we're already seeing it with the impact. They just shoot right off and go down our street. So we're already seeing that it's not that people aren't going to do it, they're gonna find another way. It's just kind of like how water flows. Yeah. So I think that we need to have a really comprehensive conversation about this, and I think this coalition is an amazing way to start that conversation and wake up people that have no idea that this plan was already, it would have already happened without a, having a lot of people go to the city council and say, well, put the brakes on this so we can collectively get this information out and learn other information, which is being done in a lot of amazing ways. Um, we do have to work with the Coastal Commission and with a lot of regulatory areas that I think could help us figure out how to preserve all because we want to see the use protected for everybody. And it can be. We're so iconic. Yeah. Neil, name another place in the world. Any of you, look at where you're a Look at, look at, your look at yeah. the parts of the world you've all surfed in. And we have something so iconic. I still pinch myself every day. I just tell people, I'm like, try and find another town where you could go from one side to the other along the coast. 
like yeah. this. You can't. Santa Barbara, you have to be a route. You have to go through the sewage to yeah. get to the <laughs> sewer drains to get to the ocean. I, and I mean, Santa Cruz, we have this. You can, I love, I, whenever people come to town, I'm so proud of Santa Cruz. I call it the 50 cent tour. Come on, let me take you on a 50 yeah. cent tour. So Guess what's on my 50 exactly. cent tour? West Cliff. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. When you take the West Cliff route out to Natural Bridges, it's so dramatically different than when you turn around and come back. And Look at those mountains. Yeah, Look you're at looking at your entire That's town, Santa. your wharf, the mountains. I mean, it's just those those views should be there for us. That's something we want to preserve. Well, there's it's a not, reason why it's reason called West Cliff Drive. It's a drive, right? Okay. It was laid out by our forefathers in the 1880s. All these pieces of roadway were needed in the 1880s, all the way from the natural bridges to the trestle, the railroad trestle up there. It's not called Westcliff Street. It's called Westcliff Drive. I just want to make that point. Yeah. Let me interject something. About six months ago, I'm old, so I don't remember anything. About six months ago, there was a meeting at the London Nelson Center. Yeah, it was all those meetings. Right? Yeah, there were community shipping, meetings. Was put in different rooms and yeah. all this kind of yeah. stuff. There was an engineering company there. What, what happened to that? that? They were trying to, it sounds like they were trying to do something a little different than what you there was There was a lot of, uh, what was that company? What was that first company? it was a technical, technical advisory yeah. board, yeah. and then it turned to the city, and then it was Avalon. Avalon? Avalon? Yeah, and then Fairlawn. it was, uh, are you talking about Fairlawn? Fairlawn. 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 Yeah. And then it was like EMC, the and, uh, and that's where we're at now. Now we have a couple new committees. But right away, they really took uh, the option of considering two-way on Westcliff was removed early on in that series of meetings, which had me very concerned. Um, I'll leave it at that. But you know, when Randy when Randy shares his story and feelings about the iconicness and the there, there's there's an emotional connection for every community member probably about Westcliff that. And I didn't expect to have even deeper connections to it in my life right now for those very reasons about why you want to be able to be on that route and be able to be on it going one direction and be on it on another direction for every user, every type of user. Yeah. And that's the goal here is to really keep that in yeah. The space is there to accommodate the whole thing. We have plenty of space. If you look at the city ordinances and go through the whole thing, we've got plenty of space and we're all on the We need to do it now. Don't wait. Yeah. 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 My name is Randy Gray. Uh, I'm part of the Santa Cruz Surfing Club, uh, part of the museum. We do stuff here with Alex and with Bob and Kim are also. Uh, it comes down to stewardship. We're stewards here. Being a steward, we take care of what has been given us. It would be a different story if houses weren't here, if there wasn't a road. A whole different animal. But we now we're stewards, we got to take care of it. Like Bob was saying, the caves. When I was a little kid, I climbed in there. My friends and I used to go back in these caves and hang out and stuff. And I remember, it's, it's a sandstone, my father was saying, it's dangerous. Kids are now doing the same thing I did 65 years ago. You know, did the same, are doing the same thing today. The sandstone breaks and it falls. If we don't take care of these caves, what's gonna happen, we won't even have a whisk that drive. A one-way or a two-way. And I am for two-way. You know, a two-way for it because what's changed in a hundred years? I've been driving this my whole life, West Cliff, since I could drive. I took driver's training back in the early 70s here, up and down West Cliff. My dad drove, it. my grandmother drove it back in the 30s and the 40s, up and down West Cliff. Nothing's changed. You know, I remember storms a long time ago. We have storms. They get right on it and fix it. Now it takes forever. You got to go do this and do well, that. You were saying about fix it. We go down fix it. It's yeah. yeah. you thing like back 50 years ago. Like, what's changed? Some things like yes, yeah, there's erosion, natural it's been happening for millions of years since whatever happened, right? I mean the ocean used to be in Scotts Valley. Right? They should find charts to in there. But that's what it's saying. It's like it changes, but it's not like fifty years from now, like it's nothing we can't solve right yeah. now with engineering. I mean it's twenty twenty four. Especially for the just for the next generation. Yeah. And future generations. Future yeah. for the future. Something else is um, a lot of times they take surveys. I look at these surveys. I read these surveys. Oh, they're talking about this. Who in the heck's that? I mean, if you're a local, you know people. If you look at their face, I saw your face. You know, I go, I know you. You know what I mean? We know locals. We know people. I see all these surveys are taken all over the area. 
But who's this? They just moved into town a year ago. I'm going to tell you right now, the people here, you know, and whoever's listening out there, these people right here give to the community. Each one of them here give to the community. They give. So they're talking about what's real. It's not like, oh, this is, you know, this is a real thing to them, and it means a lot to them. So, uh, I just got a snack in so that's it for me. <laughs> Thanks. I, have, I have one question, too, and maybe it's to all you guys. I think this point is super special because I don't know of another place in the world where you can stand on the side of a cliff and watch the surfers go by and feel the spray in your face and you know that they're down there having a great time catching a good wave and it's just really special because I mean you can see who it is when you're when they're on their waves. You can it's, yell at them. You can yell at them. Well, they, in the surfing it's contest just, they called it the surfing well, coliseum. It's well, the surf it's coliseum. Just a unique, oh, yeah, yeah. unique place to yeah. watch surfing. Another thing here is too is you look at all these people you know, they're walkers. But how'd they get here? They got here in cars. How many of the bikers get here? In cars. You know, cars aren't a bad thing. They're a good thing. You know, the majority of people good. use this cars. We love this place. We want to keep it preserved, protected, and for future generations. And it's really important, the conversations that we know need to take place with our coastal commission and with legislators and with those that are making the decisions don't want that ever made in a vacuum and that's one thing that was important to me the years I was on the council is you really have to look and see who's not in the room and I made that point when I was in the council meeting because the most impacted people in the neighborhoods I know people are saying oh those are just the neighbors they'll, they'll get used to it but it's a major impact when Daryl's talking about being on a street with your sweet kids with your girls I mean my kids are now in their 30s and we lived on a street then that wasn't taking the impact it already is taking from just the diversion of traffic. So I think it's important to recognize that those voices really haven't been heard and need to be heard, and we're hoping that we can be part of that voice. Okay, what do you see? We, we come back here in five years' time at the same meeting. What do you think is going to be changed? I hope that these two sea caves are going to be plugged with concrete, there's probably be some riprap in there to break up the wind, even though people are against riprap. Riprap is the best way to break up the surf, you know, because it actually goes into the rocks and it dissipates a little bit versus doing a wall where you get the traction off of it. Yeah, excuse me, that's because it breaks up the yeah. sand, so yeah. you know what I mean? And then, then we're preserving the surf museum, we're preserving the point break, the point surf here at the lane. And, uh, preserving the road. Yeah, we're preserving the road, too. You know? And houses. And houses too. Yeah, and yeah. real yeah. estate. Yeah, real estate. And, and you're also, if West Cliff remains the way it is, two lanes, which it has been, uh, you're preserving the integrity of the surrounding neighborhood too. The neighborhood traffic impacts will go back to normal. Quieter streets. So how can people get involved? I mean, watching. We live here. We live here. No public, no public. You know, the decision is to be inclusive. You've got to include everybody. everybody. Yeah. Okay. Don't, don't, yeah. yeah, I think just getting the word out there. So like Lynn was saying, that everybody knows what's going on. Right. You know, from Delaware all the way down the west, if all those neighbors should be aware of what's going on and have a, have a choice and a word in, we, in that. You know? We will be delivering a newsletter to them, and we will have people in neighborhoods collecting emails so that they can stay up to date with us. And we also have an email. Yeah, it's uh, WCDR <laughs> Coalition at Gmail. Is there a group trying to make it a one way? Um, yeah. I, uh, Is that still around? Or? The, the, the Santa Cruz bikes or something with bikers I don't know yeah I think they're doing it uh, they're, they've been heavily pushing it that, that, that's that's the thing that's really weird is we're kind of all-inclusive we're we, we want every we want access for everything yeah. I don't that's kind of where the common sense kind of comes in where it's like why are we even talking about one way what's the point yeah. let's talk about fixing the cliff let's talk about preserving West Cliff. Let's talk about preserving our culture. Why do people have to come in and have to change things? Why? Is it, I mean, change is good, but not when it's 
for a negative. Yeah. Imagine. It's working great as it is. Yeah, People beautiful. are loving it. We all bike. We all walk. We, we all love West yeah. Coast. Leave yeah. it alone. Yeah. Who, 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 alone. who comes down West Coast and says, it, oh, that was awful? No. It works and, and, great. It's working good. And I go, I serve West Cliff a lot. And not as much as Daryl, but I hate to say it, I've never seen a bike accident in the West Cliff. I've never seen that much. Uh, people talk about it, dangerous riding a bike, but I cruise it on my truck and I'll just cruise behind a biker or whatever, and it's no worries, or, or let them cruise. And so, but I, I just want to paint a picture too, real quick, because I think people don't realize the reality of if things change. And imagine a South Swell summer day where we're talking about probably about 15,000 plus cars a day. And imagine a South Swell where people are rubbernecking, driving up the coast, driving up, looking for a parking spot, going five miles an hour, looking, stopping, waiting for a parking spot. Because if you miss a parking spot, you're going all the way to Woodrow, all the way to Bay or Delaware, then you're sitting in traffic in. So you're gonna be going slow. I'll put money that that creates traffic that goes all the way down to Ocean Street because it's gonna merge into boardwalk traffic. We're going to, I mean, we're just creating a, a traffic jam Santa Cruz. Think about what's gotten better with one way. Pacific Avenue? Nope, not better with one way. Boardwalk? Nope, it kills local commerce too. Yeah. No one goes, to, no locals go to the boardwalk anymore or drive down I mean, or Beach Street because why would you? Yeah. yeah, and I think the impact is there's so many people coming from over the hill daily, and that's how they enter. They enter from over there, they cruise up, and they leave and they go back that yep. way. You know what I mean? This is such a vital like spot, road, that keeps them going, keeps main them vein. moving, you know, you, main vein, yeah. And to elaborate on that, the people coming from the Bay of San Francisco, North, North Bay there, if you Google, it's gonna send you towards west of Natural it, Bridges where, and bring you around. Where's their iPhone gonna send them? Yeah, it's gonna send them there, even though it's, it's down to one way or blocked off, you know, because it's not 100% accurate, as you folks know. that's what's been happening. I talked to a couple different people that were sent down by natural bridges and they were trying to get down here and all of a sudden the road's blocked off. Yeah. Because Google doesn't know it's blocked off. Oh yeah. yeah. Are we good? Yeah, we're just trying yeah. to learn. Yeah, thank yeah. you so thank much. You. Check out that view, Neil. Look at this. <laughs> yeah, look at it. Oh, there's Rat Boy. He just caught a halibut. <laughs> wow. Yeah, we all use it. We all love it. We, we want everyone to be able to use yeah, look it. Look at that. Thank you, Neil. You're the man, Neil. You're the man, Neil. You're the man, Neil. You're the man, Neil.